so happy to be with you guys again. I am very excited to share with you this recipe. A recipe from my favorite lentil mung. It's not often used in Western culture, but in India, it is used all the time across so many dishes. And today I wanted to share with you a really exciting way of cooking it, if it's, especially if it's your first time. This is gonna be a fun way to try it. We're gonna make a munglet, which is a mung pancake. And we're gonna do two chutneys on the side, a three herb chutney with lots of zesty lemon and um, a little bit of spice. And we're gonna do a South Indian coconut chutney with incredible fragrant spices on top. So let's do this. Yes! So first of all, we're gonna just make the batter. And so that only takes three ingredients. We're gonna be using our soaked mung. Now, as you can see, these have been soaked and I soaked them overnight. I've even tried them soaked over two nights and they're even fluffier. And the reason we soak them is because a lot of lentils and pulses have something called saponins in them. It's a protein in there which actually causes a lot of the gas and bloating that you feel sometimes after you eat them. And so, soaking them in water helps release them as long as you wash the water out until it's not cloudy at all. Also, according to Ayurveda, mung is considered the only lentil that's tree doshic, which basically means that it's great for all body types across all seasons. So it makes it a perfect thing to make sure you've got in your cupboard to use every season. Another incredible thing about these little beans is that it actually has an astringent quality. That basically means that it tones and detoxes your colon and your digestive tract, which means you should probably have this every week to really help cleanse your system. So we're gonna pour in our very washed and very, no, this is very washed. <laughs> and you're gonna add your little piece of ginger. And you can do this in a food processor or in a blender. Uh, both work fine, I've done it both ways. And then we're gonna add in our rice flour too. Our oil, little drizzle. And the water. Now one thing I will say about the water is um, if I've soaked my lentils for two days, then I need less water. But this is soaked for one day and so this should be the right amount for it. But if you find that the mixture is a bit dry compared to what you see next, then uh, make sure you just add in a little bit more water to get the right consistency of the batter. And let me tell you, that can actually make the biggest difference between having dense munglets or having fluffy ones. And so maybe make one and then if you realize that it's a little bit dense, you can add a little bit more water into the batter, but it's really important to get the water texture right. So now we're gonna add the Flavor Flav, all the spices that actually also help and aid in digestion of your lentils, your pulses, your beans. So I have three masala mixes going on here. I'll take you through them, but you can also, if you only have garam masala or cumin, or coriander honestly you don't need too much flavor in these because the flavor of the mung is so delicious so first we have cumin powder next we have I've spoken about this before and this is my CCF powder it's a mixture of cumin coriander and fennel a magic mix considered in Ayurveda to be again tree doshik so good for all body types but also just really yummy <laughs> And this last spice is called Mum Super Spice. Now, if you don't have this one, you can add garam masala or any of the masalas that you already have at home. But I really recommend this. It's a specific Ayurvedic spice blend. And it has so many spices from green cardamom, ginger, mace, pink pepper, fennel, cinnamon bark, and many, many more but they're really, really good quality spices and also they've been blended very specifically for your digestion. You've got your trusted turmeric. Yes, sprinkle that in. We've got our salt. And lastly, we have our dried fenugreek. So we're done with this for now, but don't forget, you've still got two more ingredients left for these munglets. We have our bicarb and our apple cider vinegar. Now these two ingredients are so important, but you only have to add them in right at the moment of making the pancakes. This makes them really, really fluffy and gives them the texture that you want. So let's put this aside and we're gonna get our topping ready. Lots and lots of veggies. You can pick your veggies you like, but um, they make it look really, really colorful, really attractive. And you also get your five a day in. Okay, so you are all set for your pancakes. So we're gonna leave all of that aside and let's make our chutneys. First up, we're gonna make our three herb chutney. 
I usually make this with just coriander, but I really, really have enjoyed adding in mint and parsley into this too. And you know, herbs are just as important as spices. They help to purify your blood, they detox your body, and help remove all the heavy metals that accumulate too. The other ingredient I wanted to tell you all about that you may not have heard of is gore, which is also known as jaggery. It is used very commonly in Indian food, but it's actually unrefined sugar, and it looks caramel, and that's exactly how it tastes. What's great about it is that it hasn't removed its molasses part, which is what's usually extracted when sugar is made. So it actually maintains all its vitamins and minerals, but also has this incredibly caramelized and earthy flavor, which I really love. And so I usually use gore when I'm making Indian food or when I'm putting it into chutneys to give it this really lovely taste. And you may think it's kind of strange to be putting something sweet into a savory chutney, but actually it really helps balance out the flavors. You get your sweet, your sour from the lime, bitterness from the herbs, actually just makes it a very well-rounded, well-rounded taste. Okay, so now we are onto the final part of this. We are gonna be making our coconut chutney. Now, coconut in Ayurveda is considered an ajas food. Ajas means vitality, vibrance. And there are quite a few foods that come into this category and coconut is one of them. It means that when you eat this food, it actually contributes to your body having that healthy glow. Your hair growing, your snails growing, your skin glowing. That's why I absolutely love using it. I use it in so many different ways, but this coconut chutney is definitely something that reminds me of my times in India because I used to eat it every single day with dosa. So let's do this. We have a whole lot of beautiful, beautiful spices going into this. Look how pretty. Ah. We're gonna blend together the coconut with some water, some ginger and the curry leaves and obviously a little bit of salt. And then we're actually gonna saute these spices, the mustard seeds, the curry leaves, the red chili, and these gram lentils in some oil, and we're gonna pour that on top. And oh my gosh, the smell that you will be smelling is gonna be amazing. So ideally, you would have a coconut like this, and you would go outside, as I will show you, and you would break it open, and you would use the fresh, meaty part of this coconut in your chutney. If you don't have that, then you can use desiccated coconut or you can use frozen coconut. But let me tell you, using the fresh coconut is so much better. It's how they do it in India and I highly recommend going through the effort to do it because it will taste phenomenal. So this is how my dad taught me to break open a coconut. Step one, get your coconut and find a nice little corner to bang it on. Step two, bang it as hard as you can. Okay, so this one's a bit rancid, um, but essentially this is how you would do it. And then you would use this coconut meat inside and grate it. But now I shall complain to where I bought this coconut because it's the second one that's come out like this. <laughs> but essentially this is how it would work. <laughs> done now the final final part we're gonna make the pancakes so remember I told you we have our final ingredients left to add in and sometimes what I do is if I feel like it's gonna take a while to make it through the batter or if I'm not using all of it I will take half the batter put it into another bowl and add half of this into it just because I find that it loses its fluffiness if you let this sit for too long with these inside already so that's exactly what I'm gonna do now I'm gonna take half of my batter Gonna pour in the bicarb and the apple cider vinegar. There you go. And then mix it up. And this is what's gonna make it super duper fluffy. And so I'm just gonna start off by putting a little bit of oil into the pan. And then I usually take about one ladle full and put it into the middle. And then just spread it out. They don't need to be super round, they don't need to be uh, too perfect but you can make them as thick as you like. Might add just a little bit more. There you go, that's a good thickness. And then we're gonna put on some of the carrots and the 
a little green bean. And you just need to put the lid on just to help it cook through. So we'll cook it on this side for a couple of minutes and we'll use the spatula, just check it's done, turn it over and it'll be ready to eat. Okay, we made it. We have our chutneys and our munglets all ready. It looks so beautiful. And one thing I wanted to tell you guys was, in Ayurveda, we eat with our hands. You'll see when you go to India, everybody uses their hands. There's rarely cutlery around. And Ayurveda says digestion starts from the moment that we look at the food. So that's why we have to make it look attractive and appealing. But also, the moment we end up touching the food, our digestive enzymes are produced. And so really being able to use our senses like touch and sight, everything before it gets to our stomach, actually really helps with the digestive process. So um, I'm gonna dig in, but first of all, let's do our prayer of gratitude. So let's just take a couple of minutes or even a couple of seconds just to thank every single person and everything that's got this food to our table. Um, and take it all the way back to the sun for growing it and for God ultimately for producing everything that keeps us nourished and healthy. Perfect, okay. So I'm so excited to do this. <laughs> ah, this is one of my favorite, favorite meals. So I usually take a dunk in this one, take a bite, take a dunk in that one, take a bite. Mmm. It's so fluffy. And what's wonderful is that it's hardly got any other ingredients except for mung and rice flour as the base. So I really oh my god. Okay. I'm gonna go finish all these by myself. No one's at home, so I don't have to share this time. Sending you all so much love and gratitude for your week ahead. Thank you so much for watching. Amazing, oh my gosh, it actually tastes amazing. You guys are gonna love this, I hope. Oh, I didn't see you there. But now that I have you, it would be really, really lovely if you could leave a comment below, whether you liked it or didn't like the video at all. I would love to get to know you and hear your thoughts. See you soon.